Welcome to worship. Today, our reflection will be given by Martin Cunningham. In our Bible readings, we hear how our love for Christ has to be obvious by the way we live. And the choir sing a song of harvest time, since September is here and the season of creation has begun. Let us pray. God, as we gather to worship you, open our lives to your goodness. Open our eyes to your presence. Open our ears to your call. Open our hearts to your love. Open our lips to your praises. Open us to your glory. Amen. There is so much we miss as we look through our eyes trained to see only the familiar, the expected, the safe. God doesn't see us this way. God looks at each of us, women and man, old and young, rich and poor, and loves. Even in the shadows, even in the cold valleys of our grief and regret, God sees us. Not just as we are, but as we can be, as God made us to be. God sees the glory and the giftedness and the possibility the nobility and the divine likeness which God placed there. Thanks be for how God sees us. Let us pray. God, our creator, your love is at work in all that you have made. Son of God, in your likeness we are made new. Holy Spirit, you touch our lives with hope. Receive our worship. Claim us for your service. Set us free to honour you today. God of honey and harvest, of grain and grape, of ocean and orchard, during this harvest time, we praise you for such abundance. God of beehives and bread baskets, of living webs and the weaving of life, of ecosystems and economy, this harvest time, we praise you for the wealth of harvest. God of bumblebees and blue whales, evolution and environment, ice field and star field, this harvest time, we praise you for the sheer wonder of the world. Holy God, giver of light and grace, we have wronged you and our fellow women and men through ignorance through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We have belittled your love and betrayed your trust. We are sorry and we are ashamed. For the sake of your Son Jesus Christ who died for us, forgive us all that is past and lead us out from darkness to walk as children of light. Jesus died and rose again in humble penitence let us accept his pardon and receive his peace. And now we pray together in the words Jesus taught his disciples so many years ago, saying, Our Father, who is in heaven, holy be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us in the time of trial and deliver us from evil, who uses the kingdom, the power and the glory, now and forevermore. Amen. Our first reading is from the book of Proverbs, chapter 22, verses 1 to 2, 8 to 9 and 22 to 23. Being respected is more important than having great riches. To be well thought of is better than silver or gold. The rich and the poor are alike in that the Lord made them all. Those who plan evil will receive trouble. Their cruel anger will come to an end. Generous people will be blessed because they share their food with the poor. Do not abuse poor people because they are poor and do not take away the rights of the needy in court. The Lord, the Lord will defend them in court and will take the life of those 
who take away their rights. Our second reading is from the book of James, chapter 2, verses 1 to 17. Love all people. My dear brothers and sisters, as believers in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ, never think some people are more important than others. Suppose someone comes into your church wearing nice clothes and a gold ring. At the same time, a poor person comes in wearing old, dirty clothes. You show special attention to the one wearing nice clothes and say, please sit here in this good seat. But you say to the poor person, stand over there or sit on the floor by my feet. What are you doing? You are making some people more important than others. And with evil thoughts, you are deciding that one person is better. Listen, my dear brothers and sisters. God chose the poor in the world to be rich with faith and to receive the kingdom God promised to those who love him. But you show no respect to the poor. The rich are always trying to control your lives. They are the ones who take you to court and they are the ones who speak against Jesus, who owns you. This royal law is found in the scriptures. Love your neighbour as you love yourself. If you obey this law, you are doing right. But if you treat one person as being more important than another, you are sinning. You are guilty of breaking God's law. A person who follows all of God's law, but fails to obey even one command, is guilty of breaking all the commands in that law. The same God who said, you must not be guilty of adultery, also said, you must not murder anyone. So if you do not take part in adultery, but you murder someone, you are guilty of breaking all of God's law. In everything you say and do, remember that you will be judged by the law that makes people free. So you must show mercy to others, or God will not show mercy to you when he judges you. But the person who shows mercy can stand without fear at the judgment. Can faith like that save them? A brother or sister in Christ might need clothes or food. If you say to that person, God be with you, I hope you stay warm and get plenty to eat, but you do not give what that person needs. Your words are worth nothing. In the same way, faith that is alone, that does nothing, is dead. Good morning. Leviticus chapter 19 verse 18 states, Thou shalt not avenge, nor bear any grudge against the children of thy people, but thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. I am the Lord. Both today's readings give helpful advice as to how we should treat our neighbours with love and kindness, as does this poem by Deborah and Belka. Do not be vengeful. Don't try to get even. Do not hold a grudge for any kind of reason. Do not be spiteful. Don't be merciless. Do not be cruel or become heartless. Do not be resentful. Don't be envious. Don't be embroiled in others' pettiness. Do not be hateful. Don't be critical. Do not be unforgiving nor become cynical. Do not be vengeful. Don't hold a grudge. For God one day, every thought will judge. Our readings tell us that through treating others with kindness and respect, and by demonstrating honesty in our financial affairs over a number of years, we can build up a good reputation in our community. 
the self-respect and blessing we receive and gain is worth far more than any financial reward. Riches may come and go, but a good name endures forever. The readings also point out that social distinctions are artificial. We're all created by God, and any class distinctions achieved during one's lifetime are abolished in death. One who sows iniquity gains nothing worthwhile. God will thwart any attempt to beat others into submission by anger. So we shouldn't lose our temper in order to gain control of a situation. Nobody should take advantage of the poor or show injustice to another. God pleads the cause of the poor and will punish the rich oppressor or unjust judge. To be merciful is to be blessed. Christians should be impartial. They shouldn't reject or discriminate against others due to their race, sex, or financial status. We should share our material possessions with others. And above all, we should do all in our power to ensure that everyone has the opportunity to encounter Jesus. We should carry out good deeds for the benefit of the community around us so that all may share in our joy. Through neighborly love, we can gain several benefits, as this Love Thy Neighbor poem by Ken Allen points out. When anger smolders in your heart and threatens to ignite, or someone wounds you with a word, that festers into spite, or if somebody without cause is sporting for a fight, to love your neighbor as yourself will make you feel all right. If you're assailed with disrespect, which devastates your pride, or try to tell the honest truth while those around you lied, or thought you had a loyal friend, but then was cast aside. To love thy neighbor as yourself will grant you peace inside. If envy rears its fearsome head beyond your self-control, or others disappoint or fail to reach a promised goal, and when it seems to many men have hearts as black as coal, to love thy neighbor as yourself will pacify your soul. I close this reflection with the words of the famous Scottish poet and writer Ian Crichton Smith as he reflects on a positive model of society where there are no barriers between neighbors and where hardships are equally shared. My neighbor. If the rain falls on you, let it fall on me also from the same black cloud that does not recognize gates. My neighbor, if the rain falls on you, let it fall on me also from the same black cloud that does not recognize gates.
let us offer our prayers for others to our loving and merciful God. Let us pray. Creator God, we thank you for the richness and diversity of each unique identity. We pray for the separate members of the body of Christ and for its corporate nature, that we may be filled at every level with the living breath of God. We thank you for the beauty and variety of our landscapes and the wideness of space. Teach us to cherish and respect the universe we inhabit and all those who look or sound different from ourselves. We pray for the different faith groups who live in our country and for the people of no faith, that we might learn to share our space peaceably and value that which is important. We thank you for the hope each newborn child brings. We thank you for the gentle gifts of laughter and friendship, thoughtfulness and sympathy. We pray that our eyes may see all others with God's affection. We thank you for the patient, patient endurance of so many who suffer so much. For them all we pray your wholeness and refreshing, your upholding and your healing. We think of those suffering through illness, through natural disaster and those suffering because of humankind's destructiveness. Please be near to them all and to those charged with bringing peace to troubled lands. We pray for those living in troubled lands where no one seems to want to bring peace. Afghanistan, Yemen, Palestine. We thank you for all our blessings and pray that we may take none of them for granted, but commit ourselves to live out our thanks each day. Merciful God, I accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Once again, it's been a privilege to share worship with you. This week, may we use our lives for works of faith. May we be known for our generosity and compassion. And may our love for God be shown in our actions to others. And now a blessing. May God be our defender and provider. May Christ Jesus dispel all that disturbs or disables us. And may the Holy Spirit make us rich in faith and loving and merciful in action. This day, this week and forevermore. Amen.